Hey guys, my name is Yasmina and welcome back to my channel. Remember what I said in my last book haul that I'll probably not have another book haul until Christmas? I don't expect to have another book haul until maybe like the end of the year. Yeah, I have a problem. Let's move on to the books that I bought. <laughs> hey guys, Yasmina from the future here. I'm slightly sick, so if my voice sounds a bit weird, that is why. Just wanted to quickly jump in here and show you three more books in this book haul because I just got back home from my trip to Berlin and I bought a couple of books there as you do and also one was waiting for me in the mailbox when I got home so I just wanted to quickly include them in this book haul because I know fingers crossed I'm not gonna make another book haul this year and so I wanted to show them here quickly so let's do that before we jump into the main part of the video. So firstly the book that was waiting for me in the mailbox is called The Oyster Thief by Sonia Faruqi? I apologize if I've said that wrong. This book was sent to me by the author's marketing team, so thank you very much. This is an adult fantasy novel featuring mermaids and an underwater civilization, and I'm actually currently reading it. I don't know if you can see the bookmark over there. The writing so far is really, really good. I'm really enjoying the writing, and also the world building is really detailed. So yeah, I'm excited to continue reading it and see what I think when I finish it. So the two books I bought in Berlin are actually graphic novels or comics, I guess, the first volumes of two series. The first one is Giant Days by John Allison and Lisa Treeman. And all I know about this is it follows a group of university, fresh university students. And I don't know, I, you don't read a lot of books about university. It's usually about high school. And so I'm curious what I think of this. Let me show you a bit of the sort of colors inside. That's what it looks like. I don't know much about it, but I'm very excited. I've heard great things. And the second graphic novel is Lumberjanes by Noelle Stevenson. Noelle Stevenson and Grace Ellis, and it's illustrated by Brooke Allen. This is a fantasy, possibly. Again, I'm not entirely sure, but it's one of those graphic novels that I've seen everywhere and people seem to really enjoy. So I wanted to give it a shot. So yeah, these are the three books that I quickly wanted to mention here. And now let's go back to the main part of this book haul. See ya. Now I've got quite a lot of books to go through, so let's just get to it. I've kind of separated them by genre and I'll start with the big fantasy pile. So the first three books I have are all a part of the same series and that is the Wayward Children series. And the books I have here are the continuation of the series. So the second, third and fourth book. The second book is called Down Among the Sticks and Bones and I've already read this and it is awesome. Just as good as the first one, if not better. Then the second one is called Beneath the Sugar Sky and I don't know much about this, but I'm looking forward to get into this. And the fourth is called In an Absent Dream and it's actually an arc sent to me by Tor. So thanks so much to them. I'm so excited I finally got my first arc. And it was from Tor who are probably my favorite publisher. So very, very excited. As you may know, or as you can see, they are short books. They are actually novellas and you know, you can read them really quickly, but they're so, so good. All of these I forgot to mention are by Sean and McGuire and they are excellent. I would highly recommend them. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting to the last two books in the series. I'm not actually sure if they are the last, last books in the series or if there will be more, but... Next book I have is the first in a series and that is The Novice. It is book one of the Summoner series, I guess, and this is by Taran Matharu. I've heard a lot of awesome stuff about this series and so I finally decided to just pick the first one up and give it a try, so I'm very excited to do so. So some buzzwords about this. The main character can summon demons and he goes to a magic school to learn about how to harness that power. And honestly, that's all I need to know. That sounds pretty awesome to me. This is so cute. I just noticed that uh, it's blurbed by Benjamin of Tomes, who is a YouTuber. It's so nice that booktubers get to blurb books. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. So that is awesome. Good job, Ben. The next book is also the first in the series. And it's one of these series that I've been meaning to read for a long time because a lot of people have read these when they were kids, but I grew up with Harry Potter. Some people grew up with these. And that is His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. And this the first book is called Northern Lights. I'm pretty sure in America it's called The Golden Compass, if I'm not mistaken. It has a different title in the UK. But yeah, really famous sort of children's series. Never read it, so I'm very excited to do so. The next book is one I got in a book subscription box, and I have an unboxing video for that if you want to check it out. I'll leave it in the card symbol and down in the description. It's from the August Illumicrate box, so if you've seen that video, you know what it is, but I'll just quickly go through it. It is called Catwoman Soul Stealer by Sarah J Maas. So this is in the DC universe 
series of books that are coming out and yeah Sarah J Maas wrote one. I love the whole aesthetic of these books and Sarah J Maas is not my favorite but I enjoy her books they're they're decent and so I'm excited to see what she does with Catwoman. Now the next book is not so much fantasy as it is sort of dystopian science fiction but I put it in this pile because I didn't have another pile that would fit it better, um, but that is Gone by Michael Grant and this is the first in the Gone series. So I've noticed recently I've been a lot more inclined to pick some of these books up that were really really hyped when I first started watching book two, but I think because they were so hyped, for some reason I, I just didn't feel like picking them up, but now after what six years now that the hype is pretty much non-existent anymore. No one really talks about these books anymore because everyone except me has already read them. But now I feel like I kind of want to pick some of these series up and give them a try. So that's what happened with this one. Um, all I know is that it's a world where all of the parents are, or, or the adults in the world have disappeared and it's just the teenagers. And apparently the kids have some kind of strange powers or they develop some kind of strange powers. So. Yeah, I don't know. I just know it's a really well-loved, uh, well-known series and I just want to give it a go. <laughs> and the final two books in this fantasy pile are the first and second in series. <laughs> and that is Stormfront and Full Moon by Jim Butcher. And these are the first and second book in the Justin Files series. So I've always been obviously interested in the series because again, it's one of these fantasy series that everyone seems to love. But for some reason, I... In my head, I always thought they were just urban fantasy. But recently, I've actually heard people say that it's actually a mystery as well as sort of urban fantasy. So that got me a lot more interested in picking them up sooner than I probably would have otherwise. I am very excited to, to get to these and they're quite short as well, as you can see. So that's why I kind of picked the first two up, just so I can give the series a proper go. Okay, so that was the fantasy slash sci-fi pile. Now I have one non-fiction book, so I'm gonna show that one now. I picked this up because it was very cheap on Book Depository one day and I've always been interested in it, and so yes. And this is The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. So this is a non-fiction book about a lot of really bizarre um, neuro neurological disorder. So these are case studies of people who have lost their memories and with them the greater part of their past, who are no longer able to recognize people and common objects, whose limbs have become alien, who are afflicted and yet are gifted with uncanny artistic or mathematical talents. In Dr. Sack's splendid and sympathetic telling, each tale is a unique and deeply human study of life struggling against incredible adversity. Now the other short pile is sort of general fiction because I'm not sure how to categorize these. But the first one is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is a adult literary fiction novel um, about a family, about a mother and a daughter who move into this small town in America where I think, you know, sort of the old houses look the same and it's a very small knit community where everyone knows each other. Then weird things happen and I think there is a lot of drama between the people who live in this community and I'm not entirely sure but it's super highly rated by everyone. I'm excited to see what this is all about. And the next book is interesting because you know I usually get recommendations for books that I want to read or that I find interesting from booktube, from the internet, from Instagram, from Goodreads, just from sort of the internet basically or word of mouth very rarely. Um, because I probably would have already heard of it from the internet. But this book, I've never heard anyone talk about it. I just randomly walked into a bookshop one day um, and I saw it there and I looked at it and it looked interesting, it sounded interesting and I, I wanted to buy it then, but books in Denmark, especially English books in Denmark, are very expensive, sometimes double the price that I would buy them online. I didn't buy it that day, but then I did later buy it online because it still sounded really interesting. And again, I've never heard anyone talk about it, and so I have no idea if this is any good or not. But I actually did check Goodreads and it has quite good reviews. Anyway, the book is called The Seven Sisters by Lucinda Riley. And as far as I can gather, this is about seven sisters who all meet up in their big mansion uh, that was their childhood home after their father passed away. And so they meet in this mansion and then again sort of family drama and 
weird dynamics start happening, I assume. Okay, and then the final pile of this book haul is classics slash modern classics. For some reason, I really felt like picking up some more classics because, yeah, I think the sort of fall winter time is actually a pretty good time to read classics. And I do read classics, not as much as I probably should. I mostly stick to modern literature, but yeah, every now and again, I feel like reading some classics. And so I've picked some new ones up. So let me tell you what they are. Okay, so the first one is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Now, I have actually read this book, but I read it when I was really young, maybe 12 or 13, I actually read it in Romanian. And I remember I really, really loved it. And I know this is one of these sort of American classics that is very divisive. So people either love it or they really hate it. Because it's been so long since I read it, I genuinely cannot remember what it's about. So yeah, I basically want to reread this and see what I think now, many, many years later. The next two are a part of the same edition and they're very, very short classics. And the reason I bought these um, was because I thought they would be really nice to read during Christmas um, or around that time. So the first one is fittingly A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. So I have seen the movie adaptation of this and I've seen, I know the story, but I have not read the actual book. And so I wanted to give it a go. I don't think I've actually read any Charles Dickens. Wait, David Copperfield. David Copperfield is Charles Dickens, right? I did read that, but again, I, I read it when I was very, very young. So I, I don't remember anything about it. It's a very sh tiny, tiny book. And so I'm hoping to just uh, read this in a nice sort of wintry afternoon with a big cup of hot cocoa or something. Um, read this and then possibly the next one. This is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I don't know much about it, but I think it's about uh, characters who have split personalities or something like that. Yeah, and it's supposed to be a bit fantastical in nature. And again, really, really short. So again, I'm hoping to read these two in a nice little winter winter evening, winter afternoon. And I absolutely love these editions. I really want to collect a lot of classics in these specific editions because I just, the feel of them is so nice. And obviously the design, I just, I love, I love. The next classic is one I have had before, but I bought it secondhand and it was very, very damaged. Like half the cover was broken and it was the small mass paperback edition and when I was clearing out my bookshelves before moving into this apartment, I cleared out a lot of books. I think I gave away about 40 books. Um, we were actually living in a sort of student apartment building at the time. And so I just put this pile of books on a chair in the sort of entryway of this apartment building. And I just left a note saying, free books, please take. And they were gone in like an hour or something. So I was very happy because I probably gave some people something to read. And I know it was not just one person taking the whole 40 books because I, I kept checking how the pile was sort of <laughs> lowering. So I think a few people um, grabbed some of them. So I'll, yeah, that just made me happy because I wasn't throwing, obviously I would never just throw books away. Uh, I would either give them to a charity shop or I would try to sell them or something. But yeah, I just, I just gave them away for free. Um, so that made me very happy. But anyway, uh, this book was in that pile um, and I, I was feeling in the mood to read some classics and I was kind of checking list of you know, what are the best classics you should read? And I was surprised that this was number one. This had so many reviews, like everywhere. I checked several lists and this was at the top for every single list. And that surprised me because I wasn't aware it was so, so popular. Anyway, the book is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Yeah, this book, I didn't know this was so popular as a classic. So that makes me even more excited to finally get to it. I know absolutely nothing about it. Uh, it says on the back that it won the Pulitzer Prize at some point. And yeah, just everyone seems to adore this book. So I think it's probably time that I pick it up and I'm gonna try to get to this sometime this year, maybe. The next book is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I don't know if you can see the title of this. You can probably see it now. Not sure what this is about, but um, 
it's a classic and it felt like picking up some classics and it's quite a chunky classic as well so that actually makes me pretty happy. This is NW or Northwest by Zadie Smith. Yeah, this is about some four Londoners, Leah, Natalie, Felix and Nathan, who left their childhood council estate, grown up and moved uh, on to different lives and then they meet up. After a chance encounter they each find that the choices they've made, the people they once were and are now, can suddenly and rapidly unravel. And it is a portrait of modern urban life and it's said to be funny, sad and urgent. As brimming with vitality as the city itself and the city itself is London. Anyway, the last book in this book call is Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden. Now I've always been interested in picking this book up because of the subject matter but actually the reason why I did decide to finally pick it up is actually pretty much for research because I'm working on a fantasy series, a young adult fantasy series that is heavily, heavily inspired by Japanese history and Japanese mythology and geishas. So I want to read all that I can about that whole subject matter. It's quite a chunker as well. So I'm excited to get to this. That is <laughs> my book haul for fall and fingers crossed the last book haul of this year because I have way too many books. This is when you know you've bought too many books because there is no way I can fit these in a thumbnail holding them up or showing you them at the end of the video. I will try but it will probably end in catastrophic failure. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's happening, it's happening. Look at all these books. <laughs> They're super super heavy. This is quite a workout. Anyway, <laughs> thanks so much for watching guys. This has been my fall book haul. I hope you've enjoyed hearing me talk about all of these books that I've bought and hope to get to soon. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next Monday with a new video. Bye. Yep. <laughs>